Far end of town where the grickle grass grows And the wind smells slow and sour when it blows And no birds ever sing excepting old crows Is the street of the lifted Lorax Grickle grass, grickle grass Street of the lifted Lorax Grickle grass, grickle grass Somebody lifted the Lorax away. What was the Lorax? And why was it there? And why was it lifted and taken somewhere from the far end of town where the grickle grass grows? The old Wunseler still lives here. Ask him. He knows. You won't see the Wunseler. Don't knock at his door. He lurks in his lurkim on top of his store. And on grickly midnights in August, he peeks out of the shutters, and sometimes he speaks and tells how the Lorax was lifted away. It all started way back, such a long, long time back, way back in the days when the grass was still green, and the pond was still wet, and the clouds were still clean, and the song of the Swami Swans rang out in space. One morning, I came to this glorious place. Then I saw the trees, the truffula trees, the bright-colored tufts of the truffula trees, mile after mile in the fresh morning breeze. And under the trees, I saw brown barbaloots frisking about in their barbaloot suits. Under the trees, happy daffy barbaloots, under the trees, in our barbaloot suits. Under the trees, eating truffula fruits, fully succulent, deliciously, deliciously, sweetly succulent, truffula fruits. Summertime's a coming, coming, under the trees, humming, fish a humming, humming, under the trees, under the trees. Oh, this glorious, glendulous, glendorious, glendulous, dandy, flandy, flandulous, truffula trees. Those trees, those trees, those truffula trees. All my life I've been searching for trees such as these. The touch of their tufts was much softer than silk, and they had the sweet smell of fresh butterfly milk. I felt a great leaping of love in my heart. I knew just what I'd do. I unloaded my car. In no time at all, I had built a small shop. Then I chopped down a truffula tree with one chop. What you doing in my tree stump, buddy? Your tree stump? Your tree stump? Mister, I am the Lorax. I speak for the... Forget it. I don't really need the stump. You can have it, little fellow. Finish the cuffs. A thing of beauty is a joy forever. Now, uh, uh, who'd you say you were, little fella? Mister, 
I am the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I speak for the trees, for the trees have no tongues. And I'm asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs, that that thing, that horrible thing that I see, what's that thing you made out of my truffula tree? Look, Lorax, calm down. There's no cause for alarm. I chopped down just one tree. I'm doing no harm. <laughs> this thing is most useful. This thing is a need, a need, a find something that all people need. It's a shirt. It's a sock. It's a glove. It's a hat. But, but it has other uses. Yes, far beyond that. You can use it for carpets, for pillows, for sheets, or curtains, or covers for bicycle seats. Sir, you're crazy. You're crazy with greed. Well, there's no one on earth who would buy that fool's need. The birth of an industry, you poor stupid guy. You telling me what the public will buy? Please, I object in the name of the trees. All complaints will be filed in this box, if you please. Now I'd reached the stage where the potential was known. This business was too big for one Wunsler alone, so promptly I built me a radiophone. I called my brothers and uncles and aunts, and I said, listen here, here's a wonderful chance for the whole Wunsler family to get mighty rich. Get over here fast, take the road to North Niche, turn left at Weehawk and sharp right at South Stitch. to speak for the trees. Here are some facts to cogitate and ruminate. It takes 10 months for a truffula seed to germinate. It takes 10 long years before the seed grows into a sapling. It takes 10 more years. <laughs> And in no time at all in the factory I built, the whole Wunsler family was working full tilt. We were all knitting needs, just as busy as bees, to the sound of the chopping of truffula trees. Then, oh, baby, oh, oh, my business did grow. Now chopping trees one at a time was too slow. So I promptly invented my super axe hacker, which whacked off four truffula trees in one smacker. We were making needs four times as fast as before, and my profits, incidentally, were soaring galore. Hmm, inadequate roadways. I want a four-lane highway over there. Instant roadway company at your service, sir. Nobody listens too much, don't you know? I speak for the trees, and I'll yell and I'll shout for the fine things on Earth that are on their way out.
they say I'm old-fashioned and live in the past. But sometimes I think progress progresses too fast. They say I'm a fool to oppose things like these. But I'm going to continue to speak for the trees. I'm going to continue to speak for the trees. It's always fair weather when good ones to get together. Continue to speak for the trees. Up the old assembly line comes another flea, answering humanities. And every need. Everybody do, 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 do need a need. It isn't just a panty vest. You should wear a hammock when you need best. It's a toothbrush holder for your weekend guest. Your canary will love it. It's a lovely nest. Try it in soup. It adds great zest. It'll cure those backache pains in your chest. Everybody do, 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 do need a need. You'll be amazed. You'll be not blessed. It tastes like bread without the crust. Groove your hair when it gets must. Rid your home of dismal dust. It's a natural, it's a must. Eliminates carburetor rust. Everybody do, 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 need a fee. It's super duper hooper hyper makes a perfect windshield wiper. Full proof tap to catch a viper. We don't complain from any viper. Papa smokes a mini viper. Baby says, Boy, what a diaper. Everybody do, 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 do. Everybody do, 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 do. Everybody do, do. Very heartwarming. Oh, place your hand upon your heart and recollect his humble start. He came here in a horse-drawn cart upon his sacred mission. Today the Wansler's fame has grown. Today the name of need is known. It's carved in everlasting stone. I'm seen on television. Huh? Oh, it's Nature Boy, the Garden Club member. Now listen, all of you. I am the Lorax. I speak for the trees. Whoosh! That was the Lorax. He spoke for the trees. <laughs> Miss Funsler, Miss Funsler. Yes, Mr. Wunsler? Miss Funsler, send in Miss O'Schmunsler. Miss O'Schmunsler for Mr. Wunsler. Take a letter, Mr. Wunsler. 
Take a letter, Miss O'Schmunzler, to my cousin Yanni Yunsler. General manager of Needs Incorporated, Stockholm, Sweden. Dear Yanni, I'm overjoyed to hear how our business in the Scandinavian market is. By leaps and bounds, speeding. The entire international picture is most exuberantly rosy and... Oh, Mr. Wunsler, he's back. That Lorax nut is back again. Yes, I am the Lorax who speaks for the trees, which you seem to be chopping as fast as you please. But I'm also in charge of the brown barbaloots, who played in the shade in their barbaloot suits and happily lived eating truffula fruits. Now, thanks to your hacking my trees to the ground, there's not enough truffula fruit to go around. I see your point, yes, I do see your point. They love living here but I can't let them stay. They'll have to find food, and I hope that they may. Good luck, boys. Good luck. Barbaloot suits, barbaloot suits. I can off to somewhere in our barbaloot suits. Please think about it, won't you? Every once in a while, I sit down with myself asking, Wunsler, why are you a Wunsler? And I cringe, I don't smile as I sit there on trial asking, Aren't you ashamed, you old Wunsler? You ought to be locked in a hoose cow, you should. The things that you do are completely ungood. Yeah, but if I didn't do them, then someone else would. That's a very good point, Mr. Wunsler. Progress is progress, and progress must grow. Things were going just fine all the way down the line. Needs were selling like hotcakes from Timbuktu to Texas. I was feeling quite relaxed in my good old solar plexus. When he snuck out of a pipe, he was back with another gripe. <laughs> Wunsler, you're making such smogular smoke. My poor swami swans, why they can't sing a note. No one can sing who has smog in his throat. And so... <coughs> Please pardon my cough. They cannot live here. I am sending them off. Where will they go? Where will they go? I don't hopefully know. What do you want? I should shut down my factory? Fire a hundred thousand workers? Is that good economics? Is that sound for the country? I see your point, but I wouldn't know the answer. Tell you what I'll do. I'll think it over. No! You've run out of time for thinking things over. I'm sorry to yell, but my dander is up. Let me say a few words about gluppity glup. Your machinery chugs on day and night without stop, making gluppity glup and also sloppity slop. Slop slop. Slop slop. Don't go, don't go. Don't go, don't go. Slop slop. Slop slop. Don't go, don't go. You're glumping the pond where the humming fish hummed. No more can they hum, for the gills are all gummed. So I'm sending them off. Oh, their future is dreary. I hear things are just as bad up in Lake Erie. Just fish out of water on hot, dry land. People ain't fish, so they can't understand what happens when simple things Dry land. 
Well, Mr. Wunsler? <laughs> First the poor barbaloots, then the poor swami swans, now the poor hummingfish. Oh, Mr. Lorax, Mr. Lorax, this cursed factory of mine, now at last, I understand. Mr. Wunsler, Mr. Wunsler! <laughs> oh, uh, yes, Miss Wunsler. Stock market's just closed, and Thneeds Incorporated stock is up. Up 27 and 5 eighths points. Wow. Wow. Rowdy dow. Now you listen to me, Pop, while I blow my top. Trees. <laughs> you speak for the trees. Well, I speak for men and human opportunities. For your information, you Lorax, I'm figuring on biggering. <laughs> and biggering, and biggering, and biggering, turning more truffular trees into needs, which everyone, everyone, everyone needs! And at that very moment, we heard a loud whack. From outside in the fields came the sickening smack of an axe on a tree. Then we saw the tree fall, the very last truffula tree of them all. No more trees, no more seeds, no more work to be done. And in no time, my uncles and aunts, everyone, all waved me goodbye. They jumped into their cars and drove away under smoke-smothered stars. Now all that was left neath the bad smelling sky was my big empty factory, the Lorax, and I. The Lorax said nothing. Just gave me a glance. Just gave me a very sad, sad backward glance. As he lifted himself by the seat of his pants, and I'll, I'll never forget the grim look on his face when he heisted himself and took leave of this place through a hole in the smog without leaving a trace. And all that the Lorax left here in this mess was a small pile of rocks with one word. Unless? Yes. Unless. What's an unless? Just a far away word. Just a far away thought. A thought about what? About something I ought? Well, a thought about something that somebody ought. A thought about something that somebody ought. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing's going to get better. It's not. Hold on a minute. Where is it now? Uh, uh, don't go, don't go. I've got something for you. Ah, uh, uh, here it is. It's a truffula seed. It's the last one of all. Catch, don't muff. in charge of the last of the truffula seeds. And truffula trees are what everyone needs. Plant a new truffula. Treat it with care. Give it clean water. Feed it fresh air. Grow a forest. Protect it from axes that act. Then the Lorax and all of his friends may come back. Thank you.